Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, the innovator of violence, Mr. Tommy Dreamer. Thanks for being here, Tommy. Absolutely, man. The fact that we're still talking about ECW and or any other performers, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. We, we got to spend like a day with New Jack, but we felt like we never got to meet Jerome Young, the man. Can you tell us about who Jerome Young is? As everybody knows, when you're doing this uh, business for as long as you do, I always say the moment I step out the threshold of my door, I have to become Tommy Dreamer, even if it's simple taking my daughters to school. And for New Jack, I've never called him Jerome. I would always be like, Jack. Uh, that's how I was introduced to him. And that's how I know him, just like, you know, I'm Dreamer or Tommy. That's you. That is your, your alter ego. But I wanted to ask you, since our episode talks about the mass transit incident, I believe you were in the locker room for a lot of that. What do you remember from that whole ordeal? I was actually first on the scene for that whole ordeal. And, you know, I had to go to court for that whole ordeal. And I remember he was welcomed into the locker room. There was no badness or ill will towards him. And unfortunately, it happened. But the aftermath, we lost our first pay-per-view for that, as well as, you know, we had to go to court. You know, he was looking at jail time which was unheard of. Tommy, what do you think is the biggest misconception about New Jack? I would guess that, that people would say he's a horrible person. Uh, he's not. Uh, I've seen him around his kids. Um, I have argued with New Jack, but not really. But I've also fought for New Jack. I've literally had guns put in our face in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, because a police officer dropped an N-bomb on New Jack. And a whole locker room was willing to fight for him. Wow, thank you so much, Tommy. I really appreciate you sharing your insight with us today. Yeah, thank no you. No problem, anytime.